I suppose one of the most famous visitors was Madame Melba and she loved walking and she walked all the way down uh, from her hotel in the centre of Miraburra to the railway station when she was leaving after her concert. And when she was there, the, the ladies of the town were gathered around to farewell her. But then this rather tousled little young fellow raced up to, to Madame Melba and presented her with a bunch of flowers. And everyone was quite horrified. But Melba, very composed, asked for his name and address and thanked him. And so the newspaper said he rose higher then than his status as apprentice to a Savaloy merchant. My father joined up and went overseas in World War I, left behind a wife and six children. He eventually got home and uh, a good friend of his was the local bandmaster and he marched the band up from the band hall and everybody he met, come on, come on, Archie's coming home. Archie Mason's coming home. The time he got to the station, there was a crowd besides the ones from out of town where Dad lived. And Mum said the station platform was crowded. And I looked at her and I said, Mum, the local station platform is, I knew how long it was, it was a long station platform. She looked at me and Mum was very dignified and very much in control and she said, I have spoken. <laughs> I said, sorry dear. <laughs> she said, it was crowded. In 1947, I was transferred to Donald for the, from Melbourne for the wheat season. And I, we stopped at Miraburra on our way to Donald. And um, it was midnight virtually, New Year's Eve, and there was a, there was a piper, a Scotchman playing the pipes, walking up and down the platform. When they had the 100 years of trains, I was station master at the time, and as I said, Mr Gibbs was the uh, chairman and he hosted a, a dinner at Miraburra, and we had it on the old station restaurant. And it was uh, rather unique. The whole dinner was cooked on the original stove before the dinner, about 48 hours before. I had my boys, uh, stoke it up, the fireplace. And because Maribor was open all night and there was staff all night, uh, they used to go in and st stoke the stove. So when the ladies come to cook, they did a three course dinner and uh, it was rather unique to see it cooked on the old stove. And it was cooked perfectly. During the depression years, a lot of young people, a lot of young men, would jump the rattler. In other words, they would climb onto the trains to get to a regional town so that they could get uh, food vouchers. They only lasted a week, so therefore they tended to go from one place to another. And they used to jump off just before the station at Miraburra, and then they'd go and they'd sit under the peppercorn trees in the station master's yard. He had a house just in front of the station. And there they would tidy themselves up before they'd go down the, to the town and then catch other food or work or whatever they could. We had some great fun when I was a kid because we used to come down here and play in the yards and we'd go down the loco and we'd play and we'd and, and as I was telling you before about the bridge that was over the end, up at the Carisbrook end, we'd get up to the top there and of course the engines would go backwards and forwards shunting and, and they'd be blowing this black smoke up, up, up like that. And of course you'd have shorts on and the black smoke used to go up the leg of your pants and around your undies. And <laughs> oh, 
know, we used to, and then we'd try and drop stones down through the funnel of the engine. And oh, gee. Then the trains going up the hill on the Ballarat line, they used to go out slowly, you see, and we'd be down the bottom. So we'd, we'd get on the, on the back of the guard's van and the guard would know that we were there and we'd ride up to the top of the hill on the, on the back of the guard's van. And as soon as it started to gain speed to get, get go over the hill, we would jump off and walk home again, yeah. Oh, but we had a lot of fun. It was great, great back in those days. And the other funny little thing, I was one evening, the uh, train from Melbourne via Ballarat came in. It was a rail motor and after it went, I had the uh, little lady and a partner came in and they uh, wanted to see me, had a delicate matter to discuss. And I said, well, what's, that? what's your problem? And they said, she said, I went to the toilet and I got my powder. Um, she said, and I'm doing my face and the draft from the toilet came up and it took my uh, roll of $20 notes down through the loo, the chute. The chute, of course, went, those days went straight onto the track permanent way. And she said, oh, I don't know what, could you arrange for someone to have a look and see if it's still on the track? I said, oh yeah, no problem. So I rang the station master at Clunes, because I knew he was an exercise bug and he used to take a, a jog every evening. And I said, well, tonight, go for your jog along the, uh, along the track there. And, and I said, see if you can see a roll of $20 bills. Anyway, Next morning when I went to work, there was a value from me, or which is, you'd say, a registered letter from the clones to me. And then it had the roll of $20 notes. Well, I went up to that, uh, after I finished the uh, morning passenger trains, I went up to the ladies' house and they were just getting out of bed. It was about half past nine. And I presented them with their money and they were very, very happy.